Hello and welcome to the Tech Capital Zapac Finance Forum in Singapore for the first time. I am now joined by Bevan Slatery, one of Australia's most accomplished entrepreneurs. And uh, Bevan, it's a pleasure having you um, at this event. So thank you so much for coming. Oh, thank you for the invitation. It's been <laughs> awesome. <laughs> thank you. Uh, you just came off the stage. Very interesting conversation around Australia and how the market is changing in Australia and across Asia on the back of Australia's um, digital transformation. Let's take a step back and start with an umbrella view of the market. What's your hot take on what's going on both in Australia and across Asia, um, around subsea cables, data centers, so around digital infrastructure? I think the um, one of the biggest things we've seen in Australia especially in the last 12 months, two years, is just the, the internet's being rebuilt. So basically when you look at communications from the United States to Singapore, for example, or even India, uh, they kind of realize we need new routes away from routes that are I'd say at risk at some level. So really we're seeing an entire new route being built from the US to Australia, and then Australia, all deep water, down the bottom, then kind of coming back up to Singapore and India and then beyond. Mm, okay, and then as we are rebuilding the internet, the, of course this comes with a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of money that's going to be de uh, deployed. Um, there's a lot of capital floating around. But what are the biggest risks for investors um, in this new space? Not new space, in this new rebuild. Yeah, yeah, I think from a connectivity standpoint, it's, it's fine uh, because it takes a while to build the asset, but the, you know, when you actually see in the data center space and AI factory space, the amount of money that's being invested and built into that is, is unparalleled. So, but what I think people aren't realizing is that there's still data centers at the end of the day, so data's got to flow in and out. So really, I think from a connectivity standpoint, it's almost like you can't have too much connectivity because it lags, I think that's the first thing. From a risk standpoint, um, uh, and when we look at data centers as well, uh, I, I think you just have to make sure that you build your infrastructure and facilities to be able to withstand and evolve as the computer evolves over, over 25 years. If you don't do that, you've got long-term liabilities for short-term asset being revenue and accountability. But if you redo your architecture, make sure it's flexible, you've got this asset that can go for 25 years and last you know, four generations of, uh, of GPUs. And then, of course, you are one of the, the, the world's leading um, investors, developers, yeah. operators of subsea cables. Um, what's your take on what's happening, especially in the Middle East, with all the cable cuts, um, the deconnectivity that's happening in some places down there? Uh, I mean, are you worried? Are the headlines a bit of a hype? Like, what's, what's your take? I actually haven't heard uh, deconnectivity before. That's actually I, I that's an awesome that word. <laughs> I I that's, that's, that's a fantastic oh, word. You, uh, yeah, <laughs> you better trademark yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, right now there's actually four, four cables cut. Um, that we had a conversation with a maintenance operator this morning and he was saying it doesn't look like sabotage, it just looks like genuine. That, that's pretty big. What our focus is on new corridors. So we built Perth Amman, the only cable that, you know, until we built that cable, every single cable that went from Europe to the Middle East when they all go down the same stretch of water, the Malacca Strait. So we kind of went, okay, we're going to build these new routes that avoid issues and challenges like that. So the same thing can happen in the Malacca Strait. So the problem in, in the Red Sea right now is to get maintenance ships in there to do the repairs near Yemen. So when we built Perth Amman Cable, what we haven't, well, I'm going to announce to you today that we've secured capacity terrestrially from Amman through Saudi, through, um, through Jordan, to then take us into the Mediterranean. So. It's a risk, but to your point, there's deconnectivity that does happen, but there is a reconnectivity through new routes. So our focus is building these new sovereign, oh, sorry, these new secure routes through uh, through new areas. Maybe this is stretching the question a little bit, but yeah. what's the work that goes into building this um, this infrastructure, these real estate assets, the, the subsea cables? When it comes to engaging with the local governments, when engaging with NATO, um, I mean, has this become a lot harder in the past two, three years? What's, I mean. Tells us as much as you can, because I'm sure this stuff you can't say. Look, it's a, the interesting point is, it's actually getting it's harder, but for the reasons that we're, we're needing to build new routes. So if we keep building to the same location, you know, the regulators, the local government, the the, the environment agency, the state government, the federal government, they've seen applications across their desk and have, have had approvals that are consistent to approve. So it's a it's a known entity. But now that we're actually needed to build these new routes that are diverse away from these other locations, you know, the, the SMAP cable we're building right now, 5,000 kilometres, it has six landings, five are new. No one's landed 
in those areas before. So we're having to go through this education process and training it. It's hard work, but I think once we do that and the community see the benefit, it'll actually be easier for the second and third person. Unfortunately, we just happen to be the first yeah. person in this case. So someone has to be the first and yeah. create the <laughs> blueprint as well. <laughs> yeah, I wish I wasn't, yeah. but it seems to be I am. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure it's still fun. <laughs> it's, it's, it gets you out of bed, like, In the end of it, yeah. you kind of go, yeah, it wasn't so bad, yeah. but in the middle of it, it's very hard. If you look into the next 12 months, what's your... I was going to say projection. What's your main wish, actually? If you had a wand for something you could change over the next 12 months, could be regulation, could be, could be anything, what would you like to change? That's a really good question. Look, if I'm in the subsea field, yeah. uh, I, think we're, I think we're finding a, a really good place right now um, because one of the things, that the position we're in such a great spot, you know, if we still own 100% of the business. Mm -hmm. From a sovereign capability in Australia, it's great. Um, I think the world is now realising each country needs a sovereign capability and if not, they need it with a trusted partner. So right now, I'm really happy with where things are going from a connectivity standpoint because the value of having um, having experienced known operator to do what we do has been great. I think the other thing that's really helped a lot is just the amount of investment that's happening in data centers and AI. So when you see that level of investment happening, connectivity's got to follow. So right now I'm really happy with things. I, I just don't want any geopolitical problems to kind of persist. Let's all just chill out and, uh, and, and be good to each other, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, maybe a bit more of a personal question now because uh, you work with a lot of water in the sense that you build subsea cables, but you're also a big defender of the Great Barrier Reef. So there's a lot of philanthropy that goes into the work that you do. Um, why are you working on now or what's next in terms of philanthropy for you? The, the kind of two main things that we do, uh, so my big project, I want to build a, a million square metres of tolerant reef uh, over the next eight years now. So that's, that's building new reefs, ultimately not just repairing old ones but building new ones in locations that are going to last 100 years. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the big projects but also in the meantime what we're doing um, through our, our foundation we, uh, we're actually um, doing a lot of work in megafauna so we do, we're the biggest funder of megafauna research in Australia and uh, that's a really big thing that we're doing and, and we're, by understanding where the megafauna go and what they're doing we're actually having a much bigger understanding of the ecosystem everything from small fish to birds to, uh, to, to entirely new aggregation zones so it's, it's kind of pretty fun I wish I could spend more time doing that yeah. uh, in some ways <laughs> building cables but I have to spend my time where I have to yeah. You could give the world another three, four years. Exactly. <laughs> and, then, and then you'll be able to focus on yeah, that. Yeah, I'll, I'll absolutely. Oh, <laughs> focus hopefully, more hopefully 12 months, two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, last question, because of course we, we are here at the Tech Capitals Finance Forum, APAC Finance Forum. Um, first time for you at our event. What, what do you think of the events? What's, what's your take? Um, what would you like to hear about next year? Look, I, I think the, the format and the agenda has been great. I think the thing I really, I'm really impressed with it is it's the quality of people here, um, the focus on infrastructure, the way that they're doing it, oh, technology as well. Um, I think it's been exceptional, great location, but the, the quality of the people and the agenda and uh, has been really, um, it's just been outstanding. So I, I don't think there's much to improve here. It's been, it's been really good and really good to see the people um, looking forward and, and solving problems, but really looking forward to investment and collaborating. It's been awesome. Yeah, it's good to see it's not just discussions, there's actually actions that come out of this place. Absolutely, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Even Slechty, thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you. Um, as for your home, thank you for watching and do check our website and socials for the latest digital infrastructure news from across the globe. At the Tech Capital, you lead, we report. Bye for now.